So I am a huge fan of the Banana Republic Icon Collection. They currently have 14 in the entire collection and I own every single one of them, guys. So in today's video, I'm gonna be raking all 14 of them from my least favorite to my favorite. So stay tuned. Hey, what's going on guys? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, glad to have you here. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, please hit the subscribe button down below. Be sure to hit that notification bell. Also be sure to follow my fragrance Instagram page. But I do want to start this video off by saying I'm sorry I haven't posted in around two months. My life just became extremely busy lately and I was also in the process of a move. But as you can see behind me, I'm in a new setup and I do finally have all my fragrances set up. So I am back and ready to film for you guys. So I will be continuing to post videos pretty much consistently from here on out. So stay tuned for all that. But as you can tell from the intro, <clears throat> That is correct. We're going to be raking all of the Banana Republic Icon collection, guys. Now, are you guys fans of this collection? Because I certainly am. That's why I have all 14 of them. Uh, to me, they are pretty inexpensive fragrances at like niche quality, guys. So I'm excited to give you my thoughts on every single one of these and tell you my least favorite to my favorite. So without further ado, let's hop right into this video. All right, so before we hop into this really quick, I do wanna let you guys know that if you're looking for any of these Icon Collection fragrances that you can't find at rack stores or like the newest ones, like Grassland and Metal Rain, you can use my link down below, Fragrance Hunter 15, to get 15% off if you go over to soavantgarde.com. They pretty much carry the entire Icon Collection. So if there's one that you wanna complete your collection or you wanna collect them all that you can't find, definitely head over to that website, say 15% off with Fragrance Hunter 15. They did actually give me some of these. I did buy most of them myself, but they did provide some of these fragrances. So I just wanna thank them for that. And yeah, go check them out. So starting this list video off at number 14, which is of course gonna be my least favorite from the Icon Collection. Now this one is actually the most feminine, in my opinion, from the entire line. And that fragrance is Peony and Peppercorn. So with this fragrance, you're gonna get a ton of Rose. I think Rose is actually the most dominant. And usually, as you guys can tell from my older videos i do actually love the note of rose like a nice jammy rose i actually think rose can come across kind of masculine but what pretty much turns with this fragrance is the peony in here guys the peony does make it very very feminine i think the note of peony the flower is probably the most feminine flower in my opinion um yeah so this one i just doesn't really work for me to be honest with you of course you also have that spiciness from the peppercorn um, all in all, this fragrance by itself is a great fragrance. So if you're a woman and you're watching this one, you might absolutely adore peony and peppercorn, especially if you like the note of peony and rose, guys. This one is very, very good for that. But for me, I'm putting this one at number 14. I will not probably be wearing this one that much. So coming in at number 13, this is actually one of the newest from the Icon Collection. I believe this was actually the most recent release alongside another one. Um, and that fragrance is, of course, Grassland. Now this fragrance here comes across kind of like uh, Creed's Green Iris Tweed and Davidoff's Cool Water. With this one though, it is a more modern take on those two classic fragrances. So if you are actually a fan of either of those fragrances, you like that cool water grassiness to those fragrances, you will absolutely probably love this fragrance. Just to me, I'm not a big fan of GIT or cool water. I just smelled it way too much growing up and stuff and just kind of get bad vibes from that fragrance. But if you're a fan of those two, definitely check out Banana Republic's Grassland. I'm sure you will not be disappointed. Like I said, it's just a more modern take on those two classic fragrances from I believe the 80s and the early 90s. So yeah, definitely check out Grassland if you like that kind of style of fragrance. It just not does, doesn't work for me that much. Okay, so heading into number 12 on the list. This one is a very, very clean fragrance. I actually like this one quite a bit, but it does go on the um, higher end of my ranking just because it is very, very simple and not very complex. But the fragrance I'm speaking about is 90 Pure White, guys. This is, I believe, the original, one of the original launches of the Icon Collection when they had the numbers 90. Now, this one, you get a very, very clean musk fragrance with this. It's perfect for like a um, like a Sunday or if you're just getting out of the shower, you just wanna smell clean. It is a very well done musk fragrance, in my opinion, especially at the price you can pick this one up at, guys. Just very, very inoffensive, very clean, and it won't offend anybody around you guys. It would just smell like you just got out of the shower or like clean clothes, stuff like that. But 
This one, obviously I ranked it at number 12 just because it is very, very simple. It's just a very basic kind of like sort of generic clean fragrance, but at the price for a good clean white musk, you can't really go wrong with uh, 90 white, pure white guys. Definitely check this one out if you want a clean fragrance. All right, so on to number 11 from the Icon Collection, guys. This one is another feminine leading sort of fragrance in the Icon Collection, but I absolutely love this one, guys. It is Gardenia and Cardamom. This one is a very nice white floral from the Gardenias, but it also has that nutty, spicy cardamom in here, guys. Very similar cardamom to like you find in um, Lenoit de Lome, which I absolutely love that fragrance. I'm a huge fan of the note of cardamom. Now this one on skin, it doesn't really come across as that feminine from the white floors in the Gardenia, guys. So don't let the name and maybe even the bottle persuade you from buying this one. If you're a fan of like nutty, kind of spicy fragrances, with sort of floral touch to it, definitely check this one out. It is very well done, especially at the price, guys. I just can't get over the prices of these. These are not your typical like generic fragrances you usually find out like TJ Maxx and stuff. These are very, very well done, guys. Kind of like I said, the niche quality with these ones at an extremely affordable price. So yeah, great fragrance all around if you love nutty, spicy fragrances with a touch of a white floral very very nice and it does on my skin at least lean kind of a little bit more masculine the gardenia doesn't last that very that that long to be honest with you it's just kind of in the opening and then the cardamom and stuff sort of comes through with some woodiness as well so definitely check out gardenia and cardamom if you like that kind of style of fragrance so now we're on the top 10. so at number 10 i actually put another very clean fragrance sort of like pure white but this one's a much more complex and i like this one a lot more for that occasion, if you're just going for a clean fragrance. And that fragrance is, of course, Linen Vetiver, guys. I absolutely love this one, especially for getting out of the shower. That's why it did rank a little bit um, higher up than, of course, Pure White on my list of likings, because this one, you do get that clean linen. Of course, when you think of linen, you think of clean, like laundry clothes, white clothes, things like that. And then you get this beautiful vetiver, guys, this grassy vetiver. In this one, it does come across a little bit dry, very, very green, just so well done. I absolutely love this one, especially wearing this one like in the spring, even summertime on a nice hot or kind of a warm day. This one works wonders, guys. Or if you're just laying around the house, you just want to smell like linen or vetiver, which of course vetiver is also known to be kind of like, um, like a clean note, even though it is very like grassy and very earthy and green but it does come across very, very well in this fragrance. So if you're a fan of vetiver, check out this one. This one also has the darkest of all the juices, guys. So this stuff is pretty potent. Of course, all these fragrances are all Eau de Parfum, so they are a little bit higher in concentration. You're not just gonna get like an Eau de Toilette or Eau de Cologne, which is nice, especially, like I said, at that price, just can't get over the prices of these guys. And these are all 75 mil if you didn't know. So you do get quite a bit of juice in these as well, not 50 mil, so that is nice. So. Number 10 is of course the Linen Vetiver. All right, so we're at number nine now. Number nine is actually a leather fragrance. Um, it's not my favorite leather in this collection as we'll talk in the future. Another leather fragrance I like more than this one, but this one is 83 Leather Reserve. We're back into the original launch, number 83, guys. This one comes across to me like a very fuzzy suede. It's not like a leather, it's actually suede in this fragrance, but it is kind of generic and boring to me, guys. It's definitely not the best leather fragrance in my opinion. I like my leather fragrance a little bit more dark, not so fuzzy like you get in this one. But I mean, it is pretty decent like on a fall day if you're wearing like a leather jacket or even like maybe a wool sweater, something like that. Just something more cozy and fuzzy. This fragrance will be good for that, but it does fall a little bit flat for being a leather fragrance, especially since the name is Leather Reserve. I expected more of like a darker fragrance, kind of like either Tuscan leather. Obviously it's not that quality, but that kind of vibe you get from or like ombre leather, like a new car smell. If you're looking for that, this is not gonna be the one for you since it is more of a suede leather, which obviously comes across a little bit more fuzzy to me. A little bit more warm though, I would say than your like regular leather fragrance. But yeah, number nine is actually gonna be, of course, Leather Reserve from Banana Republic. Let's go on to number eight now. So number eight is actually the other leather that I prefer over Leather Reserve. And that one is 06 Black Platinum, guys. Of course, leather is not in the name, just Black Platinum. But this one does come across like a, like a new car leather smell. 
but this one's extremely more complex than Leather Reserve because it actually has a note of cactus, guys. So cactus is obviously a pretty unique note. You don't really find that many fragrances with the note of cactus, but this one does have, and you do pick up on that cactus sort of vibe in this fragrance. I mean, you think of a cactus, you think of like prickly and green and Obviously, I don't think I've ever actually smelled cactus, but when I look at a cactus, I kind of picture what I'm smelling in this fragrance. So yeah, it does have the note of cactus in here. Very, very good fragrance. Um, if you like a leather, it also has a touch of like white florals in here as well. I believe that might be either um, actually cardam um, gardenias as well in this fragrance. I might be mistaken, but yeah, you do get that white floral vibe alongside the cactus and that new cars leather smell. This one actually does come across probably one of the most masculine in this entire line would be black, black platinum. It is, um, the way it comes across to me, it is kind of like an over, kind of like a kind of a fragrance that you will get at Macy's. This smells like, um, like a masculine fragrance as well, guys. So if you're looking for that at an affordable price, definitely check out this one. Very complex guys. Having that cactus note alongside the leather. Probably won't find this sort of fragrance anywhere else guys. It's very, very unique. All right, so at number seven, this fragrance is probably either going to be a love it or a hate it um, because it consists of the note of Neroli. Of course, we're talking about Neroli Woods, guys. Now, a lot of people either love Neroli as a note or actually hate it. So for me, I actually do enjoy the note of Neroli. It just comes across very, very crisp, very clean, guys. And this one is very, very well done. Of course, you do have that wood um, woodiness to this fragrance. I believe it's coming from cedar wood. So yeah, this one is very, very good if you're looking for a, pretty much of like more of a basic Neroli fragrance. It's not gonna be like Neroli Portofino from Tom Ford. That one is very, very um, more like complex than this fragrance, but if you're just looking for a good Neroli based fragrance at a great price, you can't really go wrong with Neroli Woods, guys. It does lean a little bit more masculine as well because you do get that cedar wood and obviously Neroli in this fragrance, but yeah, very, very good fragrance. I enjoy wearing this one on when I'm just kind of being lazy and maybe just run the errors and stuff. The performance for being in a Rolly fragrance is actually very, very good. So using the Rolly fragrance don't last that long, like uh, uh, the Rolly Portofino from Tom Ford. That one does not have the best longevity. I believe this one lasts a little bit longer than that one. So check out this fragrance if you love the note of the Rolly. If you don't, you probably will not enjoy this fragrance here. So number six, I was actually shocked. I thought this fragrance would be in my top three, but when I actually got it, and wore it, it kind of fell a little bit flat to me. I still do enjoy it, but I expected way more from this fragrance from the notes at least. And the fragrance I'm speaking about is Dark Cherry and Amber. Now I do love cherry fragrances. Um, of course, Galan Lom, Ideal, Odi Foam, Tom Ford, Lost Cherry. I'm just a huge fan of cherry as a note. This one, the cherry, do not expect much, man. The cherry is very, very faint with this one. It comes across like a very clean cherry note. <clears throat> It is actually a gourmand as well. You do have a praline, which is like a chocolate in this fragrance. So it does come across very chocolate. It's almost like a, you ever had those chocolate covered cherries? That's almost how it comes across in this fragrance, guys. It's not that bad of a fragrance, but I just wanted more from the cherry note, guys. That's all I wanted from this fragrance. I expected this one, like I said, to be my top three. It did fall kind of flat for me, but I do still enjoy it. If I'm just looking for like a, um, like a gourmand, cherry so if you love like those cherry chocolate covered uh desserts you probably will love this one because it kind of comes across like that and of course you do have that amber in the dry down that nice golden amber which obviously brings a longevity to this fragrance and that warmth to this fragrance as well so all in all dark cherry dark cherry and amber is not a bad fragrance it is a very good fragrance just i expected more from it so let's head on over to my top five now all right, so we're in the top five of my favorite Banana Republic icon collection, guys. And the number five is actually their newest launch in the line alongside Grassland. You guys probably know what it is if you follow this line. And that fragrance is Metal Rain. Now, at first, I wasn't a huge, huge fan of this fragrance. Um, I did do a first impressions of this and Grassland. So you can go catch that video if you want. But this one actually grew on me, guys. It comes across um, very, very modern very ozonic, very modern with this fragrance. Of course, the name is Metal Rain, so it does come across kind of watery from the, um, uh, in the notes in this fragrance, which is of course ozonic and then metal. You do get that metallic vibe with this fragrance. It also, I believe has um, black currant in here. If you love black currant, like in the Ventus and stuff, which I do, I love the note of black currant, especially like black currant tea. 
It does kind of get that similar vibes to black currant tea when I'm drinking it in this fragrance. So I do enjoy that aspect of it. But yeah, it just comes across very modern. I have heard people compare this one to, of course, Silver Mountain Water, which I do own behind me. I don't get the similarities to those two fragrances. That one comes across very inky, very like green tea-like. This one doesn't so much, but I heard it got compared to Himalaya as well, which I don't own a bottle and I'm not very familiar with Himalaya as a fragrance. I have some of it before, but if you ask me what it smells like, couldn't really tell you. But yeah, they get, it gets compared to those two great fragrances. So yeah, but all in all, this is a great fragrance. A great new release to the uh, Icon Collection. I haven't really smelled anything quite like this one, uh, being very modern and stuff. So if you're looking for a very modern Ozonic, uh, like sort of like black current kind of fragrance, definitely check this one out, guys. It works wonders on a rainy day. That's when I pull this one out when it's like rain in here. It absolutely works fantastic. So check out Metal Rain if you enjoy that kind of fragrance. You will not be disappointed with this. Okay, so at number four is probably the most popular in this fragrance. The one that's got the most talk pretty much from the community and people around. People absolutely love this fragrance. I do as well, that's why it's in my top five. Coming into number four is of course 78 Vintage Green, guys. This is a phenomenal green fragrance. Comes across um, very green. I think that's from Vetiver in here as well. But you're also going to get that green tea note. I love the note of green tea. Like we were just talking about Silver Mountain Water, that's a great green tea uh, fragrance. This one as well, it's not similar to that at all. It's not inky or metallic or anything like that. It's very uh, much more green, very crisp, like a very crisp fragrance, guys. So good. I also pick up on the note of fig in here, which fig is also another note, like love it or hate it. I do enjoy the note of fig. And I do enjoy eating fig as well. <clears throat> so yeah, this one, it deserves all the hype it has gotten in the community. A lot of people swear by this fragrance, guys, and I can see why. It's a phenomenal, clean, green, like green tea fragrance. So this one is actually phenomenal in like a spring day, like mowing grass. If you want like a green fragrance, definitely check this one out. Well worth the price if you can find it at like your local rack stores and stuff. Definitely pick up Vintage Green if you come across it. All right, so now we're on number three, my top three guys. This one could have easily been number two or number one even, but of course I had a pick. I absolutely love this fragrance, guys. It's one of my favorite and one of the most well-blended fragrances from the entire line, and that is Cypress Cedar. When I smell this one, it just reminds me of like a holiday, either Christmas, something like that. When you're gathering around nice and cozy by a fire even it doesn't smell like being by a fire at like by the fireplace by mason margella just the vibe you get with it it comes across um you get a burst of bitter orange in this fragrance oh man this stuff is amazing you also of course get that green cypress in here and of course cedar wood yeah when i smell this one i think of holiday i'm definitely probably this might even be like my christmas fragrance guys it's so good from that bitter orange cypress and cedar wood in here. Oh, it's so, so good. And this smell is expensive, guys. If I were to blind smell this one, if you had like a blindfold over me and asked me if this is either like a designer or it doesn't smell expensive, like a niche fragrance, I would say a niche fragrance 100%. This is so, so good. Like I said, I love this one so much, it could have been up higher, even at number two or number one, but the next two are phenomenal as well. And I do probably prefer those ones over this one, just because they're more my style. But as a fragrance, this is hands down one of the best from the entire Banana Republic line. And what's weird is this one doesn't get much talk about. I don't know if it's because it wasn't from the uh, original launch with the numbers or not, or as many people haven't found this one, but I'm telling you guys, take my word for this one. If you find this at any store, any of the rack stores, or even purchase this one online, you will not be disappointed. I promise you, this is a phenomenal holiday vibe fragrance. So that is Cypress Cedar at number three. So number two, guys, oh, this one was almost number one. I was pretty much back and forth on which one I should put number one. And this one came in at number two, but I absolutely love this one, guys. It is, of course, tobacco and tonka bean. Now, tobacco as a note is one of my hands down favorite notes by far. It's probably my top three favorite notes and fragrances because it comes across very masculine, very alpha, things like that. I just love the note of tobacco. 
but this one is a very unique tobacco fragrance, guys, because it comes across very tobacco heavy, especially on initial blast, but you also get that beautiful purple plum in this fragrance. As you can tell from the color of the bottle, it is purple, reminiscent of the note of plum, but you also get a weird note in this that makes it extremely complex to me. You don't really find these two notes uh, together in fragrances, and that is the note of coconut, guys. So you're gonna get tobacco, plum, coconut, uh, and a nice, warm, creamy Tonkin bean. So good, so good. This is probably, I mean, I was wearing this one a lot lately, at least. Just very, um, it isn't it, like, inoffensive or anything like that. I'm sure you'll probably get comments from this fragrance because it smells like nothing else I've ever smelled in my life, and probably others as well. So good. And the longevity compared to like um, a lot of them. I mean, a lot of them are good, like, but like I didn't mention like Dark Cherry and Amber, which was released in the same collection as this, as this the colored bottles. That one doesn't last that long, but this one here, guys, the longevity is amazing, especially for that price. If you're looking for, of course, tobacco, like a tobacco fragrance, um, compared to something like CK1 Shock, which is another tobacco fragrance around the same price as this, and you can find it both at like TJ Maxx. Burlington, things like that, Marshalls. This one is hands down, probably 10 times better than CK1 Shock for the price at least. So check this one out. Do not pass this one up if you come across it. This is one of the best from the entire Icon collection. And that's why this is at number two on my list. So let's head on over to, of course, the number one, my favorite from the entire collection. Do you guys know what it is? So number one, guys, you probably can all guess it since it hasn't, hasn't come up in this list as of yet. And that is, of course, 17 Oud Mosaic. Whew. This one is the, probably, I gotta say, the best Oud fragrance for the price by far. If you can find this one at $19.99, absolutely. If you pass this one up, guys, you're, you're doing something wrong because this one here, is amazing as far as being an oud. It does come across kind of like animalic and barnyardy, as oud is kind of supposed to smell like. Um, if you're not a fan of oud as a note, of course you're not gonna like this one, but I know a lot of you love oud, and this is a great one. Of course, you're gonna get, um, it is also a oud rose combo, which obviously that is pretty much going around a lot nowadays. A ton of oud rose combo fragrances. I mean, the note of oud and rose work hand in hand like peanut butter and jelly, but it is kind of saturated in the market. But this one has the note of plum, which kind of makes it a little bit unique and sets it apart from all the other oud rose fragrances. And it's done so well. Oh, man. And the longevity and the performance, the projection, everything with this fragrance is pretty much astonishing, dude. I'm not even glad to you guys, this one is amazing. I love this one. I'm so glad to have this one. I did come across another bottle of Oud Mosaic when I was out of my local TJ Maxx like last week. Unfortunately, I didn't pick it up. I might go back and pick it up because I love this so, so much. If you just want to wear an Oud fragrance um, like on a more of like an everyday basis, and obviously don't want to wear like Oud Saint Mou from Mason uh, Francis Kirkjohn or like um, Black of Oud by Montal or any of you like your expensive Oud Rose combos like the Teak, um, what, which one is that Oud? Palau, I believe. If you don't want to wear any of those like on a daily basis because they're expensive and you just love the Oud Rose combo, check out Banana Republic's Oud Mosaic, guys. I will not steer you in the wrong direction. This is a phenomenal Oud fragrance. So that's going to wrap up my top 14 all Banana Republic Icon collections ranked. If you did enjoy this one, leave a like down below. Comment as well your favorite from the Icon collections and which ones you guys currently own and are enjoying or don't enjoy that much. Definitely curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this entire line. But that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you did enjoy this ranking video of the collection. Um, I, like I said, I will be back posting more videos in the near future. So stay tuned to that. And I'll catch all you guys in the next fragrance upload. Take care, everybody.